Hi, my name is Mike Scott, Industrial Product Manager for the Modal Shop. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to test a Bentley Nevada Prox Pack. A Prox Pack is a reverse mount proximity probe installed inside the end of a long probe housing or holder. And at the top of the housing, which you see to my side, there is an enclosure for the electronics, uh, the Bentley Nevada proximeter. And other OEMs also make this type of equipment. I'm going to test it with a model 9110 portable vibration calibrator that will show the sensitivity of the proximity probe during a dynamic test and I'm going to mount it with our model 9100-PPASH proximity probe adapter stinger holder mounting assembly. The first step in installing the prox pack is to install the 4140 steel calibration target on top of the shaker. After that we're going to take our tower and drop this into the pocket with the needle or point of the lever facing 9 o'clock or to the left. Once that's in, we take our fork and we align it properly over the top of the shaker, lift up slightly on the bracket and slide it into the grooves on the left and right of the tower. Then push the bracket down on top of the shaker. Once we have that complete, we press down on the wedge in back of the tower firmly to secure the tower in the pocket. Next, we install our screws. So you'll see screw, screw holes at 11 o'clock relative to the shaker and 5 o'clock. And we install our screws in each hole to tighten the fork around the top of the shaker. And the second one has a lot of threads. Now our entire assembly is very tight. The next step is to install the probe clamp and spindle micrometer on top of the tower. And there's no right or wrong spot for it necessarily. I just get it as low as possible and tighten the clamp on the right to secure it to the tower. The micrometer should be facing down and on the left hand side of the tower. After that, we install the digital micrometer mounting assembly, and that simply slides over the tower, drops on top of the clamping assembly, and tightens with the screws on the left and right. Next step is to install the actual prox pack itself. As you might imagine, that goes through the clamping mechanism, and I can press down until I'm touching the target, back it off slightly, and go ahead and clamp down. Finally, we install our digital micrometer through the hole on its clamping assembly and tighten with the nut on the left. And the final step is to move the prox pack up slightly so it's not resting on the target using the spindle micrometer. There are two ways to calibrate any proximity probes. One way is by a static probe curve where we measure the uh, DC voltage against known gaps from the target. And the other way is a dy dynamic test. So let's show the static test first that many people are familiar with. And that starts at negative one volts on the DMM. At negative one, we make the assumption that we're at 10 mils from the target. Here, I don't have to press origin because it already says zero, but I'm going to go ahead and press origin. And I'll set our origin on the dial micrometer. And the next step is to move 10 mils. And so I want to see 100 on the screen of the digital micrometer. And then I know I've moved 10 mils. So in total, I'm 20 mils from the target and my gap voltage is negative 3.1. I would record that voltage at 20 mils and move on to 30 mils from the target, 20 mils from origin, and my gap voltage is negative 5.1. From there, move to 40 mils or 30 mils from origin, and my gap voltage is negative 7.1, and so on. You would continue to do that for 50, 60, 70, and 80 mils, and 90 mils. 
The other way to test is a dynamic test. And before we do that, we want to set our gap voltage so that the probe is in the center of its dynamic range. Many companies use negative 9 volts as their gap voltage, and other companies use negative 10 volts. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to use negative 10 volts. And now I know that my probe is in the center of its dynamic range before we begin our dynamic linearity test. In a dynamic test, the shaker will drive the proximity probe calibration target at known amplitudes at a speed of 60 Hz for our purposes. We have the output of the proximeter connected to the test sensor input of the shaker. And now our first test point is at 1 mil peak to peak at 60 Hz. You can see at top left of the screen our sensitivity is about 203 millivolts per mil. When I press the file button, the point saves to the memory of the calibrator, and the device tells us whether or not the probe passes or fails. And in this case, the prox pack passes because it's within plus or minus 5% of 200 millivolts per mil. So as you see on the screen, anything from 190 to 210 millivolts per mil passes, and we measured about 203. Our next test point is at 2 mils. Once again, we press save, and the screen tells us that we pass because we're between 190 and 210. After that, I can go relatively quickly. That's a 3 mil test point. At each test point, I'm looking for the amplitude and the sensitivity of the probe to settle. Here we're at 5 mils. Once I see the amplitude settle and the output of the probe settle to a reasonable amount, I go ahead and press the file button. 6 mils, we pass. This is a 7 mil test point. Pass again. 8 mils coming up next. All of these test points are at 60 hertz. And at the end of our test, we can export this information to the calibration workbook and automatically create a linearity calibration certificate for the Prox probe. Here's our final test point at 10 mils. I press save and I pass. And now my test is complete. The most difficult prox pack to test is the first one. And now that our test is complete, we can simply slide the probe out of the assembly and install the next one. I wanted to mention before we go that the model 9100-PPASH proximity probe assembly to my side also includes this mounting assembly for 5 and 8 millimeter proximity probes. And it just clamps around those smaller probe diameters. Thanks for watching. For more information on testing proximity probes, please visit our Proximity Probe Testing and Calibration Learning Portal.